Hello there. We're Tony and Susan Alamo, the Tony and Susan Alamo Christian Foundation. Stay with us for the next half hour. We have our choir, our orchestra, gospel testimonies, gospel songs, and a message from my sweet little angel wife that I'm sure you won't want to miss. You know, she's a little thing, but she's sure got a great big message. Will you let us hear from you? Uh, write to us at the post office in Saugus, California. The Chamber of Commerce said, Susan, please don't say Saugus, California when you say Canyon Country because they're trying to change the name to Canyon Country. So please, either Saugus or Canyon Country, just let us hear from you. Would you do that? <laughs> and now, my husband, Tony Alamo, to sing How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I an awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to me.
I know that all of you are interested in the personal lives of all the hundreds of young people that are at the foundation that have come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and now are carrying the gospel back into the streets, into the highways and byways to the others that they too can some come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now let's talk to Gail Bingham. Gail, how long have you been at the foundation? Uh, nearly four years now. Nearly four years? Yeah. What was your life like before you came to the foundation? Oh, my life was miserable before I, I came to know Jesus. Because I, I see I grew up in a Jewish home back in New York City, and I wanted to know about God, but I could never find any answers in the synagogues. And when I was about 11, 12 years old, I got involved with junkies, drug addicts in, on the streets of New York. And I got, was involved with drugs for over 12 years of my life before I came out to California. I was out in the streets for so many years dealing drugs, lying, stealing, cheating, and I was just miserable. I was looking for something that, some, some sort of truth. I was looking for some sort of standard to follow, so, some adult to show me the way, somebody that knew the answers, and I could never find anything. I, I attended classes at several different universities in New York City, and I worked at Columbia University, and I worked in educational TV, and, and I held down really good jobs, but I could never find any answers anywhere, and, and I read books, and I studied philosophies and religions, and I was just going around in circles. And I had taken so many drugs and, and been involved with so many really miserable type of people and, and so many junkies and, and seen so much misery and torment all my life, and I was just so disgusted. I, I, I was just at the point of despair. I, I had no place to turn, no place to go to. I couldn't go to my parents because they didn't have any answers. And, my home life was miserable, and, and like I said, I left home when, you know, at an early age. I was out on the streets, and, and when I came out to California, I was 23 years old, and I felt like I was an old woman. I felt like I'd lived 100 years. And I came out here, and, and never once did I ever hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. I lived in the biggest city in the world, and nobody was out on the streets. Nobody, was, nobody ever told me about Jesus, that he died for my sins, that I could have life. And I came out here, and I, I just thank God that you and Tony were out on the streets, that you had, had all those kids out on the streets to tell me the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when I heard it, when I, I realized that I was a sinner, when I realized that I had sinned against God and broken his commandments and his laws, I came to the cross, and I humbled myself before him as a child. And I just said, God, I, I don't care what I have to do. Whatever it is that's on my soul, take it away, because I didn't want to be alienated from God anymore. I was tired of that. I was tired of being out in that world alone. And I felt the Spirit of God. I felt Jesus pardon me from all my sins. And he changed me. I no longer had a desire to go out into that world, to do anything out in the world. I no longer had a desire for drugs after 12 years of drugs. I had no desire whatsoever. Jesus cleansed my soul. He changed me. He gave me a new life. He, he gave me something to live for, something to die for also. I never had a purpose. I never had any ambition. And Jesus Christ changed all of that. He, he just, he changed it. Gail, you've had an awful lot of grief and you've had a lot of trials and temptations since you have been a Christian too, haven't you? Yes. Your mother's caused you so much grief and you've known other griefs, but is there any way in the world, would you exchange the life that oh, you live today no. for any life that no. could be given to you? No, there's nothing in the world that could take me away from the cross, nothing in the world that could take me away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would never leave this foundation, I would never turn my back on God because God gave his life for me. I know you mean that, Gail. I do. Lord bless you. Thank you. And now Tom Gorbeo will sing Jesus Signed My Pardon. Oh 
I know that it's almost impossible to realize what these young people, what their lives really were before they came to know Jesus Christ. Um, and I look at the hundreds and hundreds of them today that have been so miraculously changed by the power of God. I remember the first time I ever saw Tom Gorbia, but let you and I both talk to Tom. I want you to share his personal testimony and to know what the Lord has really done for him. First off, Tom, you really have a right to have that Nashville sound because you're from Nashville, aren't you? I'm from Tennessee, yeah. You're from Tennessee. Uh, Tom, I'll never forget the first time I ever saw you. That was right at the beginning of the time that we were uh, going out uh, with the, uh, to take the gospel to the hippies and uh, to uh, people that uh, were really pretty strange to me at that time. And uh, I remember the first time I ever saw you that you had on a Khrushchev hat that was pushed down on your head and your hair was sticking all out from under it and you were just loaded out of your mind. <laughs> Do you remember those days? Sure do. What was it like, Tom, to have lived that kind of life? For 19 years, I just wandered around, just being loaded and stuff like that. And I came from uh, Tennessee, came out to California, just seeking the love and peace movement, but I couldn't find it out here. It turned out to be blood and guts and everybody <laughs> ripping everybody else off and rioting and stuff like that. So I just started to get involved with the drugs and fighting the police and everything I could. You know, that's what everybody's doing today anyway. And I ran into Tony and Susan Alamo. And they told me the gospel of Jesus Christ. The first time I ever heard it in my whole life. I was born in Washington, D.C. I came all the way across the states, living in different places. But no one, not even in the South, when I lived there for four years, no one told me the real gospel of Jesus Christ. And I just, just a sad thing that I couldn't have heard it a lot sooner than I had heard it. But you're happy? Yeah. In your Christian life? Yeah. Would you ever want to go back to the old life? No. Not under any circumstances? No circumstances at all. Oh, Lord bless you, Tom. I know you mean that because you have been a faithful servant of Jesus Christ since you have known him. Lord bless you.